I was just thinking about a video that was going around about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the theory behind why they have the weapons that they do. So the theory is that Splinter gave each of them their signature weapon as a means to train them. Leonardo was given two swords, which are the most lethal of all the weapons because he's the leader and he has to learn how to make the hard decisions. Raphael is given size, which are a defensive weapon, which force him to react defensively rather than aggressively. Donatello is given a bow staff, which is supposed to challenge his creativity. And Michelangelo are given nunchucks because he's very talented, but he lacks discipline and focus. And so the nunchucks require his constant attention. And on a very surface level, that's kind of fun. But honestly, I feel like if you move in the opposite direction, a theory of their signature weapons becomes much more fulfilling from a storytelling perspective. Because I feel like their weapons don't help them make up for their flaws. They are actually enhance their strongest abilities. I feel like they were either drawn to these weapons or given these weapons by Splinter because they are the best extension of their preferred fighting styles. Because at the end of the day, that's what a weapon is. It's an extension of yourself, of your body, right? So we need to give them weapons, not that inhibit them or challenge them, but that empower them. Leonardo is given two swords because as a fighter, he values precision and efficiency. He's probably the most traditional of all the turtles in terms of discipline and forms. Raphael's size are, the blades are actually not used for cutting or stabbing, they're sword breakers, right? So they trap swords, they break blades, and then you actually pummel them with the handle, they're bludgeoning weapons. So Raphael's size allow him to make the fight close quarters combat and allow him to use his physical strength to dominate the fight. That's what he likes to do. Donatello's bow staff allows him to have range, allows him to fight at a distance. It essentially gives him a dome of protection around him, allowing him to have more time to survey what is going on and then come up with countermeasures using his gadgets. And Michelangelo's nunchucks are the most unorthodox, versatile, and unpredictable of all the weapons because he's the most creative fighter. So it allows him endless adaptability and improvisation. So I think what makes more sense and what is more powerful is as Splinter was training them, you train in martial arts without weapons first, right? And so while they were training, he was watching them and he saw what they liked to do. He saw that Leonardo, as he was sparring and training what he was focusing on, he was focusing on discipline, his forms, precision, and efficiency. Ending fights quickly and decisively is the best way to move forward. He saw Raf put all of his focus into his physical body, his, his literal strength. And so he gave him a weapon that capitalizes on that strength. He saw Donatello constantly taking steps back and gaining distance and moving space so he could maneuver the environments around him. And so he gave him a weapon that allowed him to do that. Mikey is often seen as the most naturally gifted of all of the turtles, but in some iterations they say he lacks discipline and focus. But you could also say that Mikey is not bound by traditions, allowing him to be free. Every style, every technique that we have was one day invented by someone who wasn't going to follow what came before them, who was going to work for something new. So Mikey is actually the only one who's good enough to be on the new frontier of new styles, new forms, and new ways of thinking. And in that way, they're a very balanced team, right? You have disciplined tradition in Leo, you've got new ways of thinking, improvisation from Mikey, you've got close quarters combat, the, um, emphasizing strength from Wrath, and you've got distance fighting, emphasizing environmental, um, environmental adaptability from Donnie. So they don't need weapons to cover their own weaknesses, they cover each other's weaknesses. And I would say if you're gonna be on a team, it makes more sense to have four specialties rather than four people who are pretty good at everything. And I think that would be the lesson that Splinter would want to teach them, how to be their truest self. That's the only way that they can truly be successful.